What's up fellow adventurers? I'm Jessica and today we're diving into part B of the mundane item list. If you haven't seen part A, go ahead and check that video out where I walk through the first 10 items on the list and all the cool uses for them. But let's go ahead and get right into part B. Here are 10 more mundane items that every D&D character should have. Item number 11 on our list is sealing wax. Sealing wax is not only great for making letters look more official, but you can also use it for makeshift earplugs and nose plugs. Sealing wax is great for sealing up poison vents when you're in a dungeon to give your party a little bit more time to escape. You can use the wax to make small objects waterproof. And perhaps you're in a damp environment and need to signal the party. Chalk isn't going to cut it in this instance, so use wax as a waterproof alternative. Finally, wax is great for taking impressions of keys and carved ruins. The next item on our list is ball bearings. Ball bearings can be used to see if a floor is level, and this might just reveal a hidden area or trap in the dungeon. If you spread ball bearings out on the floor, you can create difficult terrain which might slow down a pursuing enemy or even knock them prone. You can cast light on ball bearings and see how deep a hole is. You can even use them to test suspicious water. Ball bearings can be used as weapons, either in a sling, or if you take a handful and put them in a sock, you can start beating up on creatures that way. Ball bearings can also be used to make distracting noises, or maybe you're trying to barter with a less intelligent creature. Take your ball bearings and put them at the bottom of the coin purse with gold coins up on top and you might just trick them. Finally, as a rogue I've snuck up on enemies and dropped a ball bearing down their collar and this has allowed our bard to use heat metal on them. Soap is the next item on our list, either in powdered or bar form. First, soap can be used to mark walls. It actually leaves a mark that's more detectable by touch rather than sight, so only those who are looking for the mark will be able to detect it. Soap can be used to grease things like squeaky hinges, just like oil from our Part A list. Soap can be used to degrease things, including your character. I mean, we don't all have to be smelly heathens, right? And finally, do you remember your chemistry class? Your DM might just let you get away with using soap, which is a base to neutralize acid. Item 14 on our list is pitons and a hammer. Pitons can be used to help you climb up or down from things. You can use them to wedge a door open or shut. You can also cast light on them and use them as makeshift light sources. Pound them into the wall like torches or even use them like the ball bearings and toss them into deep holes or pools of water. Up next, don't let your party leave home without a few extra empty sacks. How else are you guys going to carry home all that loot you're going to find? Empty sacks can also be used to cover the head of a captive, or perhaps you guys have slain a troll and need to bring that head back in order for proof. You don't want to stick that smelly, icky thing in your backpack. Having an extra sack on hand will allow you to transport that thing without wrecking all your other gear. Item number 16 is the crowbar. Of course, crowbars give you advantage on strength checks for prying things open. You can also use them as makeshift weapons or to bar a door open or closed. You can use a crowbar like a lever and lift heavier objects a few inches off the ground. You can use a crowbar to pull an object towards you or push it away from you without having to physically touch it. The next item on our list is spices and I like to go with the classic combo of salt and pepper. Both of these spices can be used to potentially blind your enemies, just like the flower suit and chalk from our Part A list. You can use pepper to throw off the scent of a creature that's tracking you. Maybe you have a pack of dogs after the party. You can also throw pepper in the face of a caster. If you get them to sneeze, you might be able to interrupt their spell casting. Salt can be used to preserve specimen. And if you don't have access to prestidigitation, use salt and pepper to make your food taste better. Item number 18 on our list is fabric. Whether that's a yard of cloth or a handkerchief, you can use it to gag or blind a prisoner, or you can even cover your own character's mouth to help protect them from bad fungus fumes. You can use fabric as part of a Molotov cocktail to tend wounds or to even muffle footprints. 
You can use fabric to quickly wipe away disguised makeup or to clean up fingerprints in order to cover your tracks. Finally, you can stuff it in the keyhole to help soundproof a room. Up next on our list is food and water. Our party needs these items to survive after all, right? Yeah, yeah, you're going to tell me you have an outlander in the group, but you guys are really going to wish you had packed food and water when you're tricked, I mean, accidentally fall into a giant puzzle pyramid and it takes you three days and nights to get out with no viable food or water sources to be found. Thanks, Ridmark. Additionally, rations are a great way to distract hungry beasts to allow your party some extra time to slip away. And finally, item number 20 on my list is actually a list of honorable mentions. And these include a shovel, a signal whistle, flint and steel for helping you start fires, a grappling hook, and a block and tackle. And for those who don't know, a block and tackle is like a rope pulley system that helps your characters lift heavier objects. And there you have it, adventurers! Ten more mundane items that every D&D character should have. That brings our list up to a total of 20 mundane items that you can use in your campaigns to add more flavor to them and your role-playing. Have I forgotten any mundane items on my list? Go ahead and drop a comment below to let us know. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We do put out new content each week. Until next time, happy gaming!